What you guys got another video here for you. This one is a $650 gaming PC build, which we're going to be doing here. If you're looking to buy a cheap gaming PC, then this could be the option for you. It's a pretty good uh, gaming PC for those who want to get into PC gaming and also have some room for some upgradability. So we went with the Gigabyte A520 MH motherboard here. Now, this is an entry level motherboard, but if you're not looking to do major overclocking and just want something to play games on, then this 60 pound board is a pretty good option. Now, there's not a lot of bells and whistles on this motherboard because it is pretty basic, but inside the box here, you do get the IO Shield, a couple of SATA cables, a motherboard, and also a CD and some basic instructions. So let's move on to the CPU here AMD Ryzen 3 3100 third generation processor here that's the one we're going to go for i did try to get the 3300x but it wasn't in stock so i went with the 3100 which should be plenty enough for a basic gaming system gonna need to remove this bracket system here now i do wish that uh, amd uh, move away from this bracket system it's getting a bit dated now it's been around for a long time and i think they need to uh, come up with a new bracketing system uh, but that's just me so i'm going to remove the four screws and the two plastic bracket bits and I'm going to keep those in a motherboard box just in case uh, they get used again in the future so I've now got those brackets off and all I need to do now is install the CPU so I'm going to remove the CPU from the clamshell here and basically lift up this retention lever pretty simple stuff and then all we need to do here is line up the CPU with the socket and then drop it straight in so let's go ahead and remove this here. I'm just going to grab it by the sides. There's a couple of little indentations here, and you should see a little gold triangle on the bottom of the CPU here. And you just line that up with the triangle on the board. You can see it right in the corner there. It only goes in one way. So if you try and force this in, you're going to end up damaging the CPU. So just make sure you take a bit of time and put this in. But it is pretty simple. So just going to drop that in, give it a little wiggle. And all I need to do is pull down the retention lever and that is it. Okay, so that is now the CPU in its socket. All we need to do now is put on the cooler. Now you can use the stock cooler, but I've gone for the CR1400 Johnsboro design cooler. This is an addressable RGB cooler and that's what I've chosen for this build. It's only 20 pounds and it also is a pretty good cooler. I wanted to add a bit of RGB bling to the build. So that's what I've gone for in this uh, particular case so this is it here so four pipes copper cooler here now this does come with two types of brackets one is an intel and one is for amd so check your user manual line them up with the holes comes with four screws and then tighten up the four screws to hold the bracket system in place it's a very simple uh, and easy to fit mechanism but basically you can use the default stock cooler if you want to if you're not interested in our rgb but for this build we're going for a bit of rgb so i'm going to use this cooler and it was the cheapest one i could find that had some good results with it we'll do some testing and make sure that the cooler is up to snuff if it's not i'll just replace it and put something else on so we've got the four screws on there now so all we need to do now is offer this up to the board add some compound and then screw it down so let's go ahead and do that so what we're going to do is put some compound on here. It does come with some compound. Now we're using the back plate that come with this board. The actual cooler did come with a back plate, but I've lost it. And what I'm going to do is use the back plate for uh, the motherboard. I do think it's a better back plate, uh, but if you look on their website, you'll see that the back plate is not all that great. It's made of plastic, but this one's made of metal. So I'm going to stick with this one. I did have some finger marks on here, so I'm going to use an alcohol wipe just to give it a bit of a clean. And uh, this will just remove any sort of oily residue that may be left behind for my fingers. And then we can put on uh, the compound here. You can use whatever compound you like. I'm just going to use the compound that come with this cooler. Should be okay. Now, a lot of people do make a lot of fuss about compound. And uh, really, just for this build, any sort of compound will do. So what I'm going to do here is just do a quick dry test here just to make sure that it fits with that bracket and the screws are going to go into it because this isn't the bracket that come with this cooler and hopefully uh, it does fit okay. So I'm just going to quickly do a dry test here. 
And uh, yep, that seems to work okay. So all I need to do here now is put on some compound. Now, whether you use the spread method, the line method, P method, cross method, it really doesn't matter. Just use what method you want to use for your particular build. Because there's always going to be people that tell you you're doing something wrong on the internet, and that's just the way the internet is designed. So just use whatever method you see fit. I've got a little bit too much on there, and a little bit's gone on the board, so I'm just going to clean this off with um, a nice propanol wipe. Just wipe that off. And I'll get a glove on, and I'll spread this out across the top of the CPU heat, heat spreader. Now again, you can use whatever method you like. And if there's too much there, I can always scrape a little bit off. And I'll do that with my finger. So it should work out okay. So let's go ahead and get the uh, glove on and give this a quick smear across the top of it. Very simple. Yeah, this stuff's pretty thick. And uh, here we go. So I'm going to just uh, spread this across. So now that's done, all we need to do now is just offer up the uh, cooler. And all we need to do is just make sure we've got this rotated around the right way. And then basically, line this up with the screw holes and screw it down so let's go ahead and line this up once we've got that lined up then just screw it down and uh go diagonal from each screw don't over tighten these straight away but once you've got that locked down it's now to put these little clips onto the fan and then hook them back onto the onto the actual cooler itself now quite a few companies use this little mechanism they are fiddly uh, but once you get used to them, it's not too bad. But just clip them on, and that will be back into position here. So I'm just going to use my thumb to clip this back and hold it into position. So there we've got the uh, fan on, and all we need to do now is put in the three-pin or four-pin header on the cable onto the CPU cooler, and then it insert our memory. So this is the memory I've gone for, the XPG Spectrix D60G. It's from ADATA. Pretty nice looking RAM. I've used this before and I did like the effect on it, so I've gone for it again. So just pull these little levers down on the end here on the RAM slots. And sometimes you get a couple of fixed ones on here, but in this case, they're both uh, retention levers on there. So I'm just going to clip this into place. It only goes in one way. There's a little notch on the RAM, and you just need to line it up and then put it in a slot and then click it down. And there's a little bit of clearance there so it should be okay just going to check here to make sure everything is okay here and it's not intruding on that uh, fan here and it seems to be just missing it so that should be good enough so let me go ahead and put this uh, next one in and this ram is a pretty affordable ram if you want a really nice looking rgb ram now don't be too frightened to push this down you want to hear a clicking noise and you should be in a good position to go and move on to the next step which is putting in the io shield pretty simple stuff just clip this into position and you should see a little ridge there just pop it into that little recess there and it should be very simple and easy to do now if you get any sort of difficulties here just use the back end of a screwdriver to push that in and you should be okay so we've got this into position i'm just checking to make sure it's nice and level and the Grounding straps are all okay. Now I'm going to just check the actual standoffs here. And uh, basically uh, with the standoffs, sometimes you have to put them into the case yourself, but these are already in position. And I've already checked with the motherboard and they're in the perfect position. So I don't have to add any, and there's none I have to remove. You want to make sure you check that because you don't want to be shorting out or grounding out the board. So offer up the board here. Push this into position, make sure it's clipped into the IO shield perfectly. And once you get it into the right position, you can then uh, screw down the board uh, with the screws that come with the case. So I've got this in the right position. So let's go ahead and screw this down. So you just need a normal screwdriver here. You can use an electric screwdriver if that's what you want to do. Tiny little screws, so you don't want to over tighten these and strip the screws. So that's now done. And I won't bore you with every single screw here, but basically you need to move around the board and make sure you screw that right down. Next up, we're going to put the power supply in and uh, we're going to be putting it into its little bay here. The power supply I've gone for is the EVGA 
500 watt. Now this is a white label power supply. It's not modular, but you have to remember uh, you can only buy with what suits your budget. Uh, so we've gone with this uh, budget style type uh, PSU, and it should be good enough for what we're doing here because we're only putting in an RX 580 into this, so it should be plenty. Now the PSU is simply held in with four screws, and that is basically it. Uh, there's a fair bit of space here for this. Now, ideally, if you're building PCs to make it easy for yourself, you really want to try to get a semi-modular or modular power supply. And this will cut down on a lot of cable that is left inside the case. And it makes cable management a lot easier. In this case, it's not a lot of room. And if you've got something like this, it will make it a bit more difficult, especially if it's going to be your first build you might find it a bit more difficult to keep those cables nice and tidy. But if you take your time, it should be okay. So just line this up and screw in the four screws. Pretty simple stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and put these four screws in. Now you can see this case already comes with an RGB uh, fan control hub there. And also I've got four fans that comes with this case, which are addressable RGB as well. And we're going to put this in. Next up, we need to put in the hard drive here and the hard drive cage and also the solid state drive. So this is the hard drive we've gone for. So one terabyte drive here. Now I'm not using an M.2 SSD. I'm just going to be using a standard SSD here just because um, it's going to be a lot more cheaper and affordable for me to uh, be able to pull this off at $650. I'm just going to get this all done. It was a bit of a faff putting it into that hard drive cage. There's no um, tallest design for this particular type of uh, case. So it has got its minor little faults, these cases, and you only see these when you actually build them. But it actually goes in here and held in with some screws on the side here. So it's not a tallest design. So they're the things you sort of need to look at when you're buying a case. Now this is held in with two thumb screws on the bottom of the case. I'm just going to line this up and then tighten down those thumb screws. So you can see there's not a lot of room here. Now we've got the hard drive in here with these cables. You're going to see there's not a lot of room and uh, you just need to make sure that you take that into account when you're looking to build a PC, especially one of these small MIDI towers. There's not much room in the basement area. It's a great place to hide cables, but you just have to bear in mind that it can be a little bit more troublesome when you've got to watch your cables like that, where you've got to try and hide. So I'm going to do all the wiring here inside here. I'm not going to show every single bit of this because you really ain't going to see much with my big hand in the way or arm in the way. So I'm just going to put in the USB 3.0, the audio cable, USB 2.0, and also uh, the front panel connection cables for the power button and stuff like that. So once I've got all those in, I need to also do the 24 pin and the CPU uh, cable as well. So I'll get that done and then we can move on to the next step. This is really not a how to build a computer. I've done those before and they're much more in depth than this. Just giving you an idea of basically what you should be doing. Okay, so all the cabling's now done. All the cables are in and the solid state drives in. All I need to do now is put in the graphics card. We've gone for the Sapphire RX 580 here. Picked this up a while ago, pretty cheap. So I've gone for it in this build. Just going to clip this in. Couldn't quite see the slot properly. But I've gone to slot this in. You ain't going to be able to see me put this in here. And uh, that's now in position. Now there is a missing little panel from the back there. That's because I already put a a motherboard in here with a different type of board and they put the graphics card in a different location. I've got a blank for that to put in there. So I've just got to screw down the graphics card here, a couple of little screws and then add in the power cable for the graphics card. And you should end up with something looking like this. I think it looks pretty sweet and you can have whatever color system you like on your build, but I've gone for blue in this case. And you can see it just looks absolutely stunning. And again, you can spend a bit more time on your cable management. That 
ketchup and mustard 24 pin cable there if you want to put a bit of black tape around there which i will be doing just before i get rid of it just to make sure it looks a bit more cleaner and a bit less on the eye when you're looking inside here all in all turned out pretty nice i think for the money uh, the graphics card doesn't have any rgb on it because it's getting a bit dated now but it's still good enough for games so we've got three rgb fans in the front it is a mesh design case which means it's going to give you maximum airflow again they're also a bit of a dust magnet if you are in a dusty environment so there we have some benchmarks here this is grand theft auto 5 running the benchmark software on here and you can see that is the results you can expect nice and smooth no problems whatsoever it will play all the AAA listed games no problem at all here so if you're on a super tight budget and you want to still be able to play PC games then something like this might be up your street it's got RGB and everything you want from a gaming PC we're playing here Shadow of the Tomb Raider here so you can see basically uh, what that looks like I'm running a benchmark on here as well I'll show you the benchmark scores so if you haven't got a budget of you know the for a RTX 3080 or an RTX 3070 or 3090 and something like this can still play modern day games now it might look a bit jerky here that's because I'm using a touchpad uh, it's a little wireless keyboard and I couldn't be bothered to pull out a proper keyboard so I used the touchpad and it just made it a little bit more of a jerky experience here but it is buttery smooth, no problems whatsoever. So if you want to play games like The Witcher or PUBG, Fortnite, any of those games, it will play all those with ease, no problem whatsoever. You can see pretty nice graphics. I'm running Heaven Benchmark here as well, and I'll give you the full breakdown of what you can expect if you run Heaven Benchmark on a Ryzen 3100 and also 16 gigabytes of RAM and an RX 580. So we'll just take a look here at some of the final result scores and you'll be able to see what you can achieve with something like this. I've not overclocked it, just left it as is. You can see frames per second, 109.5. Maximum frames per second, 204.9. And that is going to be about it for this video. So if you're looking for a gaming system on a £500 budget or $650 budget, then this is what you can expect to get. Now you can also tweak some of these uh, parts in here to suit your needs and also you might want to change out that SSD for an M.2 uh, NVMe drive. You can do that on this build. It will make it a lot faster and zippier. But again, it depends on what your budget is. But for this sort of money, you can still get a very expensive looking type uh, build for a little as £500. Also, guys, don't forget to hit the like button. It really does help with the YouTube algorithm. Let me know in the comments section below what parts you would have changed in this. But remember, it still has to be within that budget. I'll leave all the links to the uh, parts I used in this build in the video description for the UK and the US. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Thanks again for watching, guys, and thanks for your continued support. I shall see you again for another video real soon. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the red subscribe button and hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos.